The cat. What's going on, guys? Welcome back to Pure Evil MMA. I'm here with one of the best to ever do it. We got Ted <laughs> Check yeah, here. And we're actually, it's, it's been crazy the last couple of days. It's really been out of control between UFC 300. Great, come on. Yeah, but that, that's the way we love it though, Eddie, right? That's the way we love it. it it's just been crazy because we've been kind of talking trash about this card, right? The whole buildup for it. Not me. No, 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 no. But uh, there were a lot of people that were, uh, that, yeah, that, that were like, meh. You know what I mean? Yeah, they, they weren't they weren't impressed on paper about it. So uh, this episode, what we're going to be doing, Ted, is something a little different than what these people are getting on other podcasts. What we're going to be talking about today are the big highlights and what really made this card special compared to <laughs> UFC 200 or UFC 100. We're going to be going over some of the moments we remember from UFC 200 or 100 and what our actual take on UFC 300 was, and if it will bring in more MMA fans like 100 and 200 did. So, Ted, overall, mm. we always discuss this. The main event and the co-main event have to be amazing, right? When Dana was talking about how this card was going to be, how every card could be on the headline, it could be a headlining fight. Right, yep, he, he said that for sure. Did... Like looking back over it, would you agree with? Would you agree with that? I pulled the card up here. You know, uh, well, I mean, the the top three fights were uh, were title fights, so you figure a, a title fight could could be a, a main event fight for sure. Um, Bo Nickel, I would say no. <laughs> now look, and, and and I love Bo Nickel, right? I love Bo Nickel. Uh, I live in Pennsylvania. He, he was a Penn State wrestler, and I think he has so much potential. Now, they took him, you know, you, you could argue that they took him early into the UFC uh, with only, I guess, three fights. He only had three fights, and now he's had three in the UFC. And so people were upset because his fight might have seemed a little lackluster. The one, the one that he just had at, at UFC 300. Um, and, and yeah, there were uh, a lot of people that were upset that he got placed on the, on the main card. But I, I understood it, you know, because of the fan following that he automatically brings from being a wrestler. I know a guy, and this is just one guy, but I'm, I'm sure there's, there's plenty of others who he's a, he's a fan of Penn State wrestling. So he watches and he follows Bo Nichols' career simply because of that, simply because Bo Nickel was, was a Penn State wrestler, and now this guy has followed Bo Nickel to the UFC. Okay, that's, that's just one person that I know personally, but uh, I'm sure there are, there are plenty of others. So that's why, that's why Dana White, I think, uh, put him on the, uh, on the main card. And, and, you know, down, and he's the first one on the main card. Um, but, yeah, what, before we, uh, we went live, you and I were talking about Sage Northcutt. Now, here was another kid who who had a, a big fan following, you know, and, and showed some promise. So I think that's why he got put on, uh, you know, the UFC 200. Was, was he on the main? Was he on the main card? I don't think he was on the main card of UFC okay. 200, but he got destroyed and really mm -hmm. opened up. And we kind of saw, you know, what he was really worth at that moment. That was his moment to shine, and it really fell through on him. You know... That's right. crazy you bring that up because for me, on this card, Justin Gaethje is somebody I got to interview when he was in World Series of Fighting. Um, oh, Max nice. Holloway, we've been watching him in the UFC since uh, he was 20 years old. You know, he's had some amazing fights through the years. So that's yeah. what makes it really exciting. People forget he's beaten uh, Charles Oliveira. He's beaten, <laughs> he's beaten, uh, oh man. Being a lot of people over the years. Um, sure. I mean, he was he was changed. Jose Aldo, he's beaten. You know, I'm trying oh, to yeah. find. I had everything all written down, <laughs> and it all went to shit. <laughs> had it all written down of his uh, nice little build, but okay. So UFC 200. Look at this card here. Lozon right. versus Diego Sanchez. With that okay. one where 
His mouthpiece gets punched out of his mouth. That was a highlight from UFC 200. TJ Dillashaw versus Rafael Sunsau, the head kick. Pena versus Kat Zingano, the suplex. Kane versus Travis Brown comes out with the mm-hmm. spinning wheel kick. That's something we remember. Um, Brock Lesnar beating uh, Mark Hunt. And then Nunez Tate. That was wow. UFC 200. So looking at it now, yeah. UFC 300 looks a lot better now. Well, yeah, I mean, and I, I had said this before that, yeah, maybe the, you know, the, the name recognition or, or you know, the, the, the star quality wasn't there for UFC 300. But when you look at it after the fact, just the and, and as I said, this this could potentially be that that the the action, the finishes, uh, the, the, the moments, I think, uh, yeah, made this one a great one. For you UFC know, so 100, have, what's that? UFC 100 as well. It was such a moment where the UFC was on the rise. Doesn't seem like 2009 was that long ago. That card we had Michael Bisbing, Hendo with the Hendo bomb. Oh yeah, the Hendo hammer. And then we they had pay. Brock Lesnar defeating Frank Mir from the top. Yeah, yeah. We had GSP. Yep. This card, Ted. For UFC 300, the main event wasn't too happy about when it first was announced. As it built up, Jamal Hill right. coming back, I was I was really excited. They did a really good job promoting that fight. The shaved head, there's the persona, and what this man's able to do within two years being in the UFC double champ and defending his title. How impressive Talking is about that? Alex. Yeah, Alex. And, and well, yeah, a couple thoughts on that. Yeah, uh, Jama Hall or Jamal, whichever you prefer. Uh, you know, he he uh, made sure to uh, make himself out to be the villain. I think. Um, you know, and and yeah, like you said, he. I think it was. I think it was all in the in the name of of hyping the fight, uh, build building interest in the fight. So, yeah, I mean, usually there's there's a you know if you want to use pro wrestling terms, there's a heel and there's a baby face. And, uh, so yeah, John Mahal Hill, he, he had that, um, that thing that he was carrying. It was, it's, it's actually, uh, a, a well, much smaller version of what you would find on, uh, it's a place called Easter Island, uh, which I believe is off the, off the coast of, of Brazil. It's in, it's in, I think it's in the Galapagos archipelago, if you will. But anyway, I guess he thought that that was going to irk Pahea. In, in some way, or, or maybe, or was he saying like, Hey, this is, this is what I'm going to do to you. I'm going to shrink your head down or that you look like, you look like one of these, these, uh, statues at Easter Island. Um, I, I don't know. I think, I guess he thought that he was going to offend, uh, Pahea by, by having that, or that it was some kind of voodoo that he was, that he was throwing at him or something. I don't know. Well, with the, there, there's actually a story behind it. Alex, I okay. forgot exactly how the story came out, but he has one of those, um, and it's like a, it's like a, it's part of the, the lore of Alex, <laughs> I guess you would say okay. there. Um, so that's okay. why he had it and he put it like on a chain, just trying to promote it. And then I don't know if you noticed this, Ted, but, um, last mm-hmm. night guys, somebody was watching Jamal Hill on their phone. They recorded this. He goes up for the walkout, right? He's in the he's in the cage waiting for Alex. When Alex usually walks out, he does the whole thing where he pulls back the bow and arrow, right? And he lets it uh, launch. Oh, is is that why Adesanya did that when he knocked Alex out? He did the same thing, the bow and arrow thing. Exactly, exactly. That's like <laughs> Alex's thing. So, while Jamal was Jamal was in the cage, he welcomed it, pretend like he caught it and broke it over his knee. People are making fun of it. They're like, he's probably practicing that in the mirror thinking it was bad. It was fucking right. badass. If you're sitting there and you saw that all take place, it adds a little specialness to it. There's like all sure. these things, but. Um, you can see it both ways, you know, because like, you know, these guys in the NFL, you know, they practice their little victory. You know, oh, if I'm going to score a touchdown, I'm going to do this kind of dance. Like, okay, yeah, you know, they look in the mirror and they do that. But yeah, yeah, you know, it's it's still it adds to to the whole uh you know build up for the fight. You know what really did it for me though Ted was how this fight went from getting kicked in the nuts waving Herb Dean away 
says, uh, hold on a second. I'm in the middle of something. I'm about to kill this man. When mm-hmm. he punches him, Ted, he doesn't really connect with his full fist, DC was pointing out. He connects with, like, the bottom part of it. And you watch mm-hmm. Jamal's eyes roll into the back of his head. That's that's very interesting, yeah. Um, because, generally speaking, you want to hit with these two knuckles. You don't, you don't want to hit with, with the bottom one. But and and maybe also I don't I don't and I don't know if DC said this, but it wasn't a, a real hook, and it wasn't an uppercut. It was more of a sh- what they call a shovel, so somewhere in the middle between those two, between this and and this, it's kind of in the middle. So it's, it's called I believe they call it a shovel punch. Um, so uh, very effective, obviously. Um, but uh, yeah, that, that's that's very interesting. Um, and uh, yeah, what a, what a great. You know, because I, I still think about when Alex got knocked out by Adesanya, and I'm like, whoa, you know, it, it, guy needs to come back from that, and and boy, did he, you know, in a, in a very convincing manner. Well, you know what actually was surprising about all of it too, <laughs> a moment like that to happen on a card this big. That's a six hundred thousand right. dollar finish. Max Holloway got $600,000 for his finish as well. Kayla Harrison submits Holly Holm. There were some moments on this card. I right. didn't really dig the female fight, but at the end of it, you know, they're discussing, thank you for supporting the Chinese women. And I could see how that's a big deal. Two Chinese women in the octagon mm-hmm. for a huge event. You know, China, you know how crazy they are for their, for their fighters. Two females. Right. And you think here in America... It wasn't that long ago, Ted, probably your grandparents, you know, women weren't allowed to do many things, let alone they couldn't go to work. Women couldn't vote not that long ago here in America. Think about, right. you know, over in China. This was a much bigger deal than was actually brought to light. Would you would you agree with me there? I don't think anyone's really well, respecting yeah. that. And here's another thing is that um, China is not necessarily an ally of the United States. Uh, and. So, yeah, there's there's definitely a sentiment, not not necessarily among all Americans, but against some Americans, you know, that that uh, China could possibly be, uh, you know, somewhat of a, uh, you know, at least on the down low, kind of a hostile nation towards us. Uh, we I, I know that our president does talk with with uh, the president of the, of the Chinese Communist Party, you know, but still, you know, you got the whole TikTok thing. You know, a lot of people consider that to be. Uh, poisonous to to the American culture, and and it, and it's traced back to to the Chinese. Be that as it may, Ted, let me say something about that because it's really interesting okay. that that you did bring that up. People don't realize that we're giving China all this information, and what China's doing in their schools now is they're training them to basically be a young army. The TikTok algorithm in China is a lot different than what it is here in America. We're seeing violence. We're seeing people against people in China. They're showing them positive things, learning, uh, motivational things. Um, And if you look deep into it, it's very evil. So, you know, last night after the fight, she was saying, thank you. Come to China, come eat food. But it's interesting that you bring that up. But. Um, yeah, but I, what I was going to say was that this is America and, and, uh, you know, this is, and yeah, it's a cliche, but it's also true. The land of opportunity. It's a land of opportunity. I, I don't know that you're going to see a fight like that in, in another country. I don't know. Do, do they allow women to fight in China? I, I don't know. Um, but, but I don't think that you would see a fight, uh, certainly not on the scale of, of UFC 300. You know, and it's and it's just one fight down from from the main event, or you could say it was the co-main event. You know, so so I think only in America are you gonna, and only in the UFC are you gonna see a fight like that happen. And you know, here in America, I think I think we're very forgiving, and and we we uh, we look at someone's merit. You know, are you a good fighter? Doesn't matter where you come from. Are you a good fighter? Can you throw down? And if you can, great. Then we're gonna watch you. You know, what do you think that did last night for the pay-per-view numbers? I didn't get a look at how the sales were. Um, you know what right. was- See, that that might be. I, I wouldn't be surprised if if the numbers weren't. That's that's where the star power comes into play. Is is in the pay-per-view numbers? You know that that. 
Um, but although, you know, Dana White said, what, what was it about the, the gate, which is the, which is the amount of money that you draw in from the live audience. I think he said that that was the third highest gate in UFC history. So that meant there were, so that, so that probably because of like, well, all the seats were expensive, but you know, then when you, when you got down to, you know, close to ring star or cage side, they were really, really expensive. Um, cause there were not, I don't want to say only, but there were like 20,000, just a little over 20,000 plus in the arena. I saw some of the photos of it. It looked absolutely insane. I think one of the other ones was Holly Holm versus, uh, Ronda Rousey in Australia. Uh, but for the, for the new people, for new MMA fans out there that might be tuning in, uh, explain what the gate is. It's. What exactly? Right. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, that's that's the money. As far as I understand it, that's the money that they draw. So well, so there's let me back up. There's there's multiple revenue streams that you that you get from a that the UFC uh, receives from a pay per view. So you get the pay per view numbers. So those those people watching at home or they they go to a bar and the bar has it, uh, and then there's the people that that go live to see it. And so that's called the gate. So it's it's all the money that they that they get from people buying tickets, um, and maybe I don't know if the gate also includes merchandise. I, I'm I'm not clear on that, but yeah, uh, generally speaking, it's 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 the money that you make from people going to see the event live. And so my guess is, because it was 300, they you know hiked it up a bit, and and you know understandably so. So that that's why the gate was so high. Uh, T- I guess they call it that because it's people you you got to walk through a gate to to get to to get to the action to get to the arena. So I guess that's why they call it that. So it's an old term. The stars were out in action last night too. Before we discuss uh, anything out, there were so many people there, big celebrity names mm-hmm. that came together last night for these moments. And they captured sure. their reactions to a lot of these knockouts, which I thought was a genius idea because there's uh, okay. so few moments in MMA history, Ted, where you stop in the middle of your tracks and you put your hands to your face or to your mouth or you just have nothing to say. That is one of the most beautiful things about mixed martial arts. It's one yeah. of the things, it's almost like the rush that this is, this is why it's special. If you're a young kid or it's your first time watching a UFC event, this was the perfect event for that because it's set in motion. Even if you watched it by yourself, the energy and the impact, the roller coaster ride of the entire event in a whole is going to bring you to a point like we had last night, Max Holloway pointing in the center, um, uh, Alex shooing him off, just all these little moments it's kind of like somebody taking their first hit of cocaine in a way. They're going to chase that <laughs> high, right? You feel me? Ted, what was that moment oh. for you when you became an MMA fan? What was it, your first moment you were like, oh, wow, I got to watch more of this? All right, five, five, now we're, we're going back a ways. Um, I mean, and, and just, just to say, I, I believe Dana White calls them holy shit moments. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, and I'm usually going, oh! Oh, you know, kind of like a Joe Rogan. That's that's usually what I do. But um, I mean, because I, w- I remember it when, you know, when it first came out in the, in the 90s. I do remember it then. Um, I, I don't know if I if I watched all the pay-per-views, but I remember it being around and, and then going to Blockbuster and getting VHS tapes. <laughs> OK, that that's uh, that's that's what I remember. Um, but I, I, I mean, there's been so many holy shit moments over, over the years. Um, I'm trying to think of one in particular that, that, uh, you know, really shocked me. How about, um, how about the UFC 100 Hendo bomb? That's, that's a huge one. Right. Conor sure. McGregor. I, mean, I, I could tell you, I'll tell you one. It was it wasn't on 100 or 200, but it was, uh, Chris Weidman knocking out Anderson Silva. Never forget that moment. Everyone yeah. was in disbelief at Buffalo Wild Wings that night. Yeah, that that was just that was probably a moment where I was like, oh, my God, you know, that just uh, shocked the hell out of me. That one, uh, I mean, Connor knocking out Jose Aldo, 
Uh, yeah. So, I mean, you know, we, we could we could sit here all night. But w- one thing I did want to bring up, you mentioned the, the money. And that that was another thing that made this special. And, and the, w- the way that it happened where they were having the press conference. And I guess it was somebody from the media said, well, Dana, what are you going to do for the fighters? Typically, you give fifty thousand dollars for fight of the night bonuses and, and things like that. Um, what are you what are you going to do? And then the fighters were chiming in. You know, Dana was Dana was encouraging it, and the fighters start chiming in, and and a couple of them might have said three hundred, make it three hundred thousand, and he says done. You know, that that was that was something special. You know, that, that is really huge, Ted, because look at what a difference. That made, hey, guess what? Every single one of those fighters made sure to make weight. Not a single fighter missed weight on this card. Do you see the difference that it made, the impact that it made when you actually pay these fighters? Now, some people on the other side playing devil's advocate here, Ted, would look at it saying you're enticing people to almost kill somebody. For that amount of money, you're putting a hit on somebody's head, people might say. I, I mean, I, it's it's the fight game, you know. You you, you go into it like that. <clears throat> I think it was I think it was uh, Gagey who said that. He said that it, he goes into the fight thinking that he's not he might not survive. You know, it's 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 a it's an attitude that you have to have, and uh, or that some fighters some fighters have that adopt that attitude. Uh, other there's fighters a young boxer. You, We've seen moments of it recently. Young boxer, huge career ahead of him. He was about to fight for the championship. He gets punched with a dirty, with a dirty punch in a boxing match. His head starts ringing. He starts feeling a little weird. That man's in a coma. That man is no longer physically. He lost oxygen to his brain. He's oh, half God. mentally uh, impaired now. Uh, I forgot his name, but it's one of the saddest things to see. And when you see um, how it happened and the punch that it took to do that to somebody, it does open your eyes to be like, every fight should be a fight where I can make sure everyone's going to be okay after this. At the level that some of these guys are, they should be making $300,000 bonuses and stuff like that. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, and there, and there were some other fighters too that uh, Dana White said after it. He said, yeah, we're gonna, I'm going to take care of... I've, he rattled off like four or five different names. Uh, other, other fighters beyond the ones... The, the ones that got the, you know, the 300,000 for the particular, you know, fight of the night or whatever. He said, I'm going to take care of this person. I'm going to take care of that person. You know what I mean? So, so yeah, it was, it was, it was great to see. Um, and, and, uh, I, I guess, well, I guess after this, we'll, we'll go back down to, uh, to the 50,000, but <laughs> maybe, uh, maybe by UFC 400, <laughs> it'll be 400,000. You know, one one can only hope. So they brought up how, and I thought this was actually really interesting. There's one fighter on this card who has been on UFC 100, 200, and 300, and that's Jim Miller. That, Jim what? Miller. How crazy is that, Ted? Jim Miller. Wow. How durable is that? You know, that that that's just, I probably, I don't know, I can't think of a better word. Durable. You know, uh, the guy is just, uh, yeah, he's a machine. Um, that, that's, a, that's a fighter right there. That is a true, true blue fighter. Let me talk about the fight everyone wants us to discuss here. We had a knockout in the fifth round at four minutes and 59 seconds in one of the most classic ways ever going back to, and people may not remember this, uh, this originally happened not yeah. In 2019, where Max Holloway points in the center. He did this back in 2015, I believe, against, I forgot the guy's name. Was it O'Brien mm-hmm. or Corillia? Oh, it was one of these guys. And he pointed to the center of the yes. octagon and says, yes, we're going to do this. That. Yeah, it was like the last, I don't know, what, 10 seconds of the fight? He's like, let's, let's, let's just go toe-to-toe. Max Holloway has... TKO'd Jose Aldo. He's finished Anthony Pettis. But this fight was a moment where I felt if he lost in a devastating manner, Max might be at the end of his career. However, 
We saw a 20-year-old kid throughout his career go from losing to Conor McGregor to changing things in his life, putting forward self-discipline, pride for his country, going on, I think it was like a 14-fight win streak. <laughs> then he has a little trouble as he got older. I think he's 32 or 33 now, which yeah, it could be in your prime, but he's probably 45 in you know MMA years, let's say. This was the legendary highlight to his reel. Would you not agree? Uh, thus far, yeah, for sure. Um, you you had mentioned, uh, you know, had he lost this, would would he have been kind of would would that have been it? I tend to think that of Justin Gagey. I I don't know. He's a little. I think he's a little bit older, isn't he? Isn't he more like thirty five? All right, because I I I'm a little concerned for Justin Gagey. Okay. Yeah. Hold on, I muted my he's, mic for a second. Every, he, he's only lost five fights, right? But those okay. fights that he won, too, he's taken more damage in those he, fights. He, takes, he tends to take a lot of damage. He tends to take a lot of damage. Um, and he was definitely, I'm not saying he's a slow fighter, but he was slower. I mean, Max definitely had the speed advantage. And Ma let's not forget, Max jumped up in weight. Correct, Max. Usually, not fights only that, but uh, he grew into it. Unlike last time, when you know moving up in weight and losing dust in the diamond the way he did, this time he actually looked like he was inside of his own body. We've seen Max Holloway go through disgusting weight cuts where he does not look like he's gonna gonna really make it. Kind of like Kayla Harrison uh, at the weigh-in show did not recognize her one bit. It's really scary <laughs> to see, but Max Holloway. Looks like he actually grew into his body, got comfortable with it, adjusted. His boxing mm. skills are a lot better than Justin's, but people were counting him out. Ted, were you counting Max out too? I, I wasn't counting Max out per se, but uh, I did think that uh, I, I'm, I'm a big fan of Justin Gagey. Not that I'm not a fan of Max Holloway, but I, I'm a bigger fan of Justin Gagey, so I, I was I was rooting for him, you know, uh, but – yeah, Max just uh, wow. I mean, what what a uh, what a performance he put on. You know, very very dominating. I think he there, there may have been one round in there that Gagey won, or or came close to winning, or you know, it was very competitive. But the the rest was just was all Max. Um, one judge actually had it going at the very end. He had it a draw. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I don't I don't know about that. <laughs> well, going into that last I'm not, round, he not gave sure what they were watching. Then. He had it 2 to 2 going into that final round. Okay. Huh. Isn't that crazy? Well, hey, the son we still can't get right yeah. is the judge. Now, now correct me if I'm wrong, but there were were there two eye pokes uh that Holloway Holloway poke, poke gauge you twice? Bad. Um today now I'm Justin's not trying to make eye. Did you see Justin's eye today? No, not today. No. Look, I'm going to pull it up here on Twitter. It looks well, also, like. Also, bear in mind he got his nose broken. So when you, when you break your nose, you, you know your eyes get messed up too. But um, yeah, let's. Um, you're, you're gonna you're gonna throw it up on the screen. Yeah, I'm throwing it up on the screen right now for everybody because it looks disgusting. He actually had surgery on his nose as well, uh, Justin okay. Gaethje. Uh, forgot exactly what it was. Yeah. The nose break was just in the, in the course of the fight. And that wasn't, there was nothing, uh, you know, that was, a, that was a head kick, right? I, I can't find this photo. I, I can't find it, but it's, it's disgusting. Disgusting looking. It's absolutely disgusting looking. His whole eye is completely black and blue, and it's crusty looking. It looks like it's crusty. Oh, God. Oh, God. You know, what Well, these... we apologize for anyone who might be having dinner at this point. Uh... <laughs> well, Ted, it's, it's a big thing. What do you think about eye pokes and stuff like that? They get away with it. You can get away with a lot in an MMA fight. And yeah, it's something... yeah. Yeah. I... I mean, it's up to the judges, I guess, not the judges, the, the referee, whether to take a point away. 
I, I think that were there any points taken away in this fight? No, no. Nope. Yeah, see, now that needs to be enforced. Because because that's the only way that you're going to get fighters to to close their hands is if it really really hurts them. If it really matters to them, and and the only way you're going to get that that across to them is by taking points away. I feel, you know, um, it's a, look, it's at, a, look at John Jones. Look at look at look at uh, the guy's made a career out of poking people in the eyes. Exactly, exact. I was going to say that. Exactly. Yeah. You can almost expect so, him to do something illegal in every fight for right. his advantage. Right. Right. Uh, you know, does does illegal stuff outside of the cage and inside the cage. <laughs> yeah. Matter <laughs> of fact, Ted, uh, I don't mean to get off topic, man, but I had such a great time going back watching our UFC 200 reaction live uh -huh. on air while mm. the news broke in the chat room. Minion tells us John Jones is out of the headline for UFC 200. And that moment itself, I mean, there were so many parts for UFC 200 that on the buildup of it was amazing. And that was something this card was kind of lacking, I guess, between John Jones falling out, between um, Conor McGregor not getting on the UFC 200 card, the right. Mark Lesnar announcement. There were just all these little things that made UFC 200 really feel like it was a moment but what we remember and why we hold it so dear to our hearts i'm realizing now we had it all backwards ted check this out okay. we remember ufc 200 not for what it really was i was mm -hmm. looking back at ufc 200 day the highlights who was on the card and i'm like oh my god maybe what we remembered was the feeling the build-up but nothing was really that spectacular. Misha Tate versus Amanda Nunes, Diego Sanchez, right. Joe Lozon, Sage Northcutt. Um, there was really nothing that crazy on the card. TJ Dillashaw, Asuncao, Kane Velasquez. I mean, so so we remember it for what it wasn't. We right, remember it for almost what it wasn't. But this what, card what been. had all of the tools during the events that UFC 200. I feel was missing, right. but. Right. Everyone was giving it shit. Yeah, because we we thought maybe Adesanya versus Duplessis. We, we thought that was gonna gonna be. Uh, I think we were hit. waiting for a freak show announcement as well. <clears throat> freak show, yeah. I mean, something that Pride used to be uh, famous for the freak show fights. I mean, like a last minute big fight because there was this whole thing. Tell me if you kind of pick this up too. My consp I had a conspiracy going on in my head. Conor McGregor, right. Michael Chandler, they do a whole season of Ultimate Fighter together, right? Right. They push the fight off. We're waiting for the fight. Conor McGregor comes live on his Twitter. He says, yeah, I'm coming back. Dana White says, yeah, I don't know when it's going to be. Probably in like six months. Then USADA. Right? We get rid of USADA. Right? <laughs> we get rid of USADA. Well, I mean, they, I mean, they got so he doesn't need to be show. in the pool or this and that. We see him getting beefed up, jacked up, doing the movie. Michael Bisping's done a movie, came to fight, knocked a lot, uh, Luke Rockhold out. Um, I thought that was going to be the big surprise. But come to find out, we didn't even need it. We didn't need Conor McGregor. And I feel like that's something else that we nope. need to take away because... This wasn't a card where we we actually thought we were going to get some legends in it, right? We wanted Anderson Silva at UFC 200. We wanted all these older fighters. This was a young, fresh, talented roster, and it was rich. It was violent. It had our legends in it against <laughs> equal fights, and it just couldn't have been any more beautiful. It was, people, I guess, like to say, beautiful destruction, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think I think you summed it up uh, um, beautifully, Eddie. Uh, <laughs> no, I mean, I mean, I think I think that really uh, that really nails it right there. And uh, I, I like uh, the fact that um, you know, uh, looking ahead, all the possibilities that these fights at UFC 300 have opened up. You know what's going to be next for Max Holloway? Uh, he's going to stay at Kayla 155, Harrison, I guess. Ted. 
Kayla Harrison mm -hmm. proved herself, did something that we all expected Ronda Rousey to accomplish. She gets the rear naked choke ah, on, yes. on Holly Holm. Yeah, so is Kayla is is Kayla the new Ronda Rousey with better striking? So here's how I felt. I thought this could have yeah. went one of two ways, Dad. They were going to do the cyborg treatment for Kayla. Bring her over. You see her go through this weight cut. They diminish her, right? She looks frail. Bring her in to show everybody. Look, the UFC is where all the real talent is at. They did Chris Cyborg so dirty. She loses uh, one fight. I see, I see where you're going. I see where you're going with this. I thought they were trying to deplete Kayla Harrison and make a statement out of her career. And that would absolutely screwed her. However, this works out for Kayla. She's lost one fight. She's 17 and one. The way that she's built up her career, if she stayed with PFL, I don't think she could have been as big of a star. If Justin Gaethje stayed with World Series no, of Fighting, he no. would never have been as big of a star, right? We could pick out these fighters that have come over. This is another very exciting moment in MMA history, and it couldn't have went any more beautiful. Kayla Harrison versus Amanda Nunes. That would be an amazing fight that I, I would really mm -hmm. like to see next. And, there, and there's talk of that. There is, there is talk of that. Um, but, uh, yeah, I, I don't know. I remember that that has been done in the past with some fighters, like, or, or at least there was a suspicion of that, that oh, Dana White's bringing these, these fighters over uh, just so that they get their asses kicked or whatever, just, just so he can show that the UFC is the top, you know, when, when he, when he brought guys over from pride. Uh, but then, you, you know, you could argue, well, geez, look at Rampage Jackson. He came over from pride. Woo. What do we got here? Okay. Korshkov versus Henderson. So right here, Pitbull, Benson Henderson gets signed to Bellator. This was a big moment in MMA history. Benson mm -hmm. is going to go mm -hmm. over there. He's going to destroy everybody. Nobody has a chance over there at Bellator. They said, all right, come over here. For, you can get the first fight for a championship title. Come come test it out. Right? They give him crash right, right. Ted, I was there live for this event. Um, Benson Henderson got picked apart by a guy. Nobody had a clue who, who he even was. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. I remember that. The UFC does this treatment to fighters like that. It's the UFC treatment. So for this to happen, I mean, do they I don't know. I I wonder. I mean, do they still do it? Is it is it are they kind of beyond that now? Uh or maybe it's like, "Hey, look, you you know, you made a name for yourself uh in this other promotion. Now welcome to the big leagues. We're going to throw you in the deep end and we're going to see whether whether you sink or swim." Look at Eddie Alvarez's career. When he came over from Bellator, we did not see the underground king at these fights. We saw a more quiet, safe, nothing but wrestling every single fight to make it to the championship. Um, he, he played it pretty safe. They throw him in the deep end. They throw him right into the top 15 to see how they do. Look at MVP last week or, or two weeks ago to see how they do. Um, for Kayla... She's one fighter I do believe could and will become a champion. When they brought over Justin Gaethje, they brought over Marlon Morales, and then they re-signed, um, oh man, I forgot the other guy's freaking name. They signed three fighters at the end <laughs> of World Series of Fighting to come over, right? Okay. Justin Gaethje's the one who really did anything with the career. Kayla Harrison, she's another one I believe has true promise and potential. People aren't believing MVP is going to be a champion. Michael Chandler, he's another one who came over from Bellator. Um, I, I believe Kayla will, will be champion. Oh, hey, speaking of Chandler, so they did make the announcement that Connor, Dana, Dana White made the announcement that Connor and Chandler will fight. Uh, I at, haven't heard. Um, I haven't heard this yet. Yeah. When was this? Okay. Well, here you go. I, I just I just saw it. Um, yeah, they're, they're going to fight uh, at International Fight Week. Is it is it in June? It's always, it's always in. Uh, I feel like last year it was on a different it's week. Either or, the, or end Mandela or the end of June I think it's the first week of July or the because my birthday is June fourteenth. I think it's a. I thought it was a week after that, the third week of June. Is that what you said? 
I thought it was like June 29th. It's I, I don't know. Um, Around Fourth of July for sure. It's before the Fourth of July, if I remember correctly. It's it's, it's the, yeah. It's whatever the card is uh, at the International Fight League. Let's check this out. Yeah, that, that's apparently that's happening. That just got announced just now. Uh, I today, saw it. Um, I saw it today. Conor McGregor. That's that. That's actually perfect. Then. He finishes this movie. It's good promotion for Conor McGregor again. However, Ted, with the announcement being said, how do you think that fight could go? Because it might be the last time we see Conor McGregor get as much clout as people give him. If he loses this, people are going to look at him like a joke. I was rewatching yeah. the UFC uh, 194 replay because I was trying to go back and see some of these big moments where I was like, oh my God, this is history. This is a historic moment. You saw Conor in there. He was hungry. He wanted to be in there. Conor's gotten to a point in his career after the Mayweather. I went to the Mayweather press conference in Brooklyn, right? I went to go cover it. Yeah, yeah. Something changed in Connor after UFC 205 here. Something really disgusting happened in his life. He became unfaithful. He started beating up old men at bars. He became uh, sexual allegations against him. He's really become kind of disgusting in right. my eyes not, over the years. The, uh, the from throwing dollies at buses and... Just reckless. If he loses this fight against Chandler, man, I just his career's become a joke, and it's kind of sad to see. Yeah, I mean, uh, geez, he. Uh, I think, you know, I mean, it, money, uh, you know, causes some people to become complacent. Uh, I think it was, was it Rocky, two or Rocky three? Where you know, I think it might have been three. So he, so Rocky the champ again and he's on top of the world and you know he he starts uh things start getting to him you know money starts getting to him and he and he gets he gets complacent and then that's when he loses to oh, the big speech mr t right he has a big speech yeah. uh yeah. right so so he, he loses his edge so for me that you know the question is can can connor gain oh, that edge back okay. The one where you know, he, he gets all the money, right? He has all the money, the nice house, the robot servant. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got to rewatch that, right. man. So, so, so the, uh, yeah, the question is, can Connor somehow regain that, uh, that motivation, that fire in the belly, so to speak? Can he, or is he just too far gone because he's worth, you know, however many millions he's, he's worth? You know, I mean, maybe he needs to just hold himself up somewhere. You know, like go go to kind of a a remote area. Another Rocky reference. You know, when Rocky went to Russia and he was out in the middle of nowhere in a in a barn and he had to trudge through the snow and climb up the mountains and all that kind of stuff. You know, maybe that's what Connor needs to do: is get separate from his family and and just you know get get a good group of people to you know for a training camp and you know just hunker down and just eat, sleep, and train. That's it. Maybe that's what he needs. But yeah, I think you're right, Eddie. If if uh, this doesn't go well for him, you know, I, I don't I don't know that we'll see him again. I'm glad that you said that about it, Ted. This is actually a really interesting moment in his career, um, mm -hmm. where it is he's he is on the fence. This is a rocky moment, Ted. This, that that was the most perfect thing to say right there because <laughs> for this guy's career and all he's accomplished. We don't really see the discipline, the movement, the, the training that he was doing. Or am I being, are we being kind of too much on him? Because if you look at the people he's fighting, Ted, we're not yeah. talking about, you know, the top 15. We're talking about the number one, the number two guys in the world. We're talking about the top of the top, the creme de la creme, as they would mm -hmm. say. And it's not mm -hmm. easy to beat guys at that level where every time you step in there, you're at the Super Bowl, right? Right, right. Uh, oh, well, I, I, you know, and th wait, didn't I see something about Nate Diaz? He wants to, he wants to get another crack at Connor too. I, I, I think Connor, 
I don't see him fighting for the title ever again. A- any I don't title. think he needs to. His but name is yeah, big no, enough. You're right. You're right. He doesn't. He doesn't need to. He can just. He can just do these. These kind of these big. I can do these main things, events. right? I, I can do these <laughs> things. Yeah, he can do these big main event type. These big fights. Red uh, panty night. You know that that yeah. It's not for a. It's not for a title, but he. You know, he, he's he's a huge draw, and and so it's so it's going to be. I don't want to say a freak fight, but it's, you know, it's, it's just one of those fights that like everyone is going to want to see it. It doesn't matter if he's fighting for a title or not. Is Conor McGregor the real Rocky? Is that what we're seeing here? Are we... <laughs> is that what we're saying? That's Rocky in real life. I mean, that's I, what I, I think that Rocky, uh, the, the Rocky character, I think mainly, um, well, God, he, he never did any of the things that Conor's done, uh, outside of the, the ring. You know what I'm saying? Like, like the, the Rocky character always was, uh, you know, a lovable uh, kind of guy. You know, the lovable everyman. But Matter Connor of fact, has... speaking of Rocky, I interviewed uh, Tommy Morrison's wife. Do you remember Rocky Five? I think it was. The young kid. He plays the himself. Machine Gun. Tom... Tommy Gun. Uh-huh. Do, you, do you know about his story and the corruption, the conspiracies? Uh, jeez. Oh, I mean, I, I mean, he was a boxer in real life. Tommy who got he was a allegedly boxer. HIV. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So I interviewed mm-hmm. his wife and she oh, wow. brought me, Ted, when I tell you folders of evidence that stack up and leads you to the point of this giant conspiracy and corrupts the most evil thing I've ever seen from people behind the emerald walls, right? The people behind mm. the curtain that are moving peas on a plate to really brainwash people to corrupt and make all this extra money. And the things that she brought to me, Ted, is really interesting. I got to re-upload that interview for everybody, but uh, wow. you, just, you just reminded me of that. But that was another guy, yeah, right, like on the that. rise. Like and everything just kind of went to shit. But um, yeah, this is going to be a huge moment for Connor, Ted. I'm on his Twitter Right now, in fact, and I'm going to play it and I'm, I hope you're going to be able to hear this too. Uh, Connor just posted something here and I'm going to play. It. So let's check, let's check this out. We're, we're going to fight right now. We're, we're going to do this right now, right here, right now. That's what he posted. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's what he posted. <laughs> I, 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 what's that? What's right that from? We're, we're gonna do this right now, right here, right now. Oh my god! What the? F- <laughs> that's okay. So I guess when I guess when you're that big, that's all you need to do. Okay. He's put. Uh, yo, I, I don't get it. I don't. I don't get it either. I do not get it either. I guess that's how he's announcing the fight, though. Is 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 that right there? Oh, okay, okay. Ted, you know what this is from? I figured it out. I figured it out. It's from this. Ready? Well, of course, I can't see what you're showing. But... Hold on, it's about to play. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Um, here we go. Now? We're going to do this right now. Okay. That's not the real audio. So on the ultimate fight, the season, the ultimate fighter that he was on, um, that was a moment during the season with Michael Chandler, um, (laughs) saying that. That was Chandler saying that? Well, that's Connor saying it in the audio, but Chandler said it originally on that season, ultimate fighter. Doesn't sound anything like Connor's voice. 
Well, he, he's making he's he's place? making fun of him. He's making fun of Chandler. Apparently, I guess oh, I did. Okay, I'm I'm guilty of not watching the Ultimate Fighter, Ted. That's on. You know, I used to really enjoy the Ultimate Fighter. It's something I really miss, and it was a big part of what the UFC was. The UFC got to a point where they didn't need it anymore. However, that's in season now that the fight is going on. I'm kind of interested to rewatch that season and see their interactions to get the real full story of it. Now that the fight is on, would you be interested in watching uh, the ultimate fighter again? If it were to air right now, Conor McGregor, Michael Chandler, instead of months ago, would you be more interested to watch the ultimate fighter? Did they screw up? Did they, did they fumble the bag here with this one? Uh, You mean, you mean by the UFC stopping uh, production of it? So no, I mean, fumbling the bag as in, they recorded that season Ultimate Fighter Chandler versus McGregor too early when the right. fight wasn't really, you know, set. Kind of what they did but with I, I UFC. Think they, I think they thought the fight was going to follow it, right? Didn't I mean? That's what's supposed to happen. You you have the Ultimate Fighter, and then the, the two coaches fight. They usually fight at the main event of the of the of the card where you've got you've got some of the guys from the. Uh, International Fight Week. It usually goes down International Fight Week. Okay, so we're just we're just like a year off. All right. <laughs> but uh, yeah. but they are doing it on International Fight Week. You said so. It, it yeah a year yeah. a year off. Well, let me uh, let me go back to something though. Okay. We were talking about Rocky, and you, you asked is is Connor the the, the Rocky IRL uh, in real life? I say no because I, well he has he has parts of the character. But then the other the the part that he's not emulating is the the lovable everyman that Rocky was. Uh, Connor let the money get to his head, and so he he became, uh, well, how shall I put it? He he became a trashy multimillionaire. You know he he yeah he may have had millions, but his behavior was like that of a trashy person. Uh, so not, not a very lovable person, not, not a very, uh, and, and he, so, so he transcended or he, or he, you know, he got beyond the, the every man, you know, because, because of his arrogance, um, and thinking that he was better than everyone else. Which is kind of so, interesting. Cause you look at John Bones, sad. right? Let's co- compare John and Connor here. Who's got the more evil side? Like, we all thought Connor was this great, lovable guy, funny guy, charismatic, popular, always had witty things to say, to now doing interviews, shaking, coked out, um, posting things that are just absolutely insane. But yeah. then you look at John Jones and the hard time he gets as well. Who did who did it worse, Ted? I, I, it's kind of a tie. <laughs> It, it's kind of a tie, in my in my opinion, uh, because I mean we just have this latest thing with John Jones. Hey, but and, Connor's and, never so, rescued a woman who got her purse robbed from her. Well, no, no, but he's also never hit a hit a pregnant woman in his car and took off either. <laughs> right, right. So, so it's like you know, uh, how how do you score that if you're a judge? So you're saying, you- Ted, it's it's it comes down to it's so close. To split a hair, and there it's about a picogram away. <laughs> a picogram, huh? Whatever Remember, John is. Jones got busted UFC 200 for the picogram, right? No, he had a picogram not- of something in his system, and that's why he got kicked out of UFC 200. Remember? Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa! So, so, so it's a very, very small amount. A very tiny, tiny amount. He got caught with a picogram of some steroid in his system. Which got him wow. pulled off the UFC 200. Yeah. Well, I remember. I mean, one of the times I don't know if it was that time, he was taking estrogen blockers, because when you take steroids, they they tend to uh, make your your chest as a man grow larger. They call it bitch tits or gynecomastia is the is the medical term. So so the the breast starts to kind of cone out like a woman's, and so yeah. that a lot of because fighters the high get called out for that. Like one of their nipples gets bigger and stuff. Like uh, Alex, I mean, uh, Israel Adesanya's gotten called uh, out. Adesanya's got it. Yeah. Yeah, he's got it. Now, I mean, can it occur naturally in men? I think there is a small percentage where it can. But generally, I check myself speaking, in the shower every day, Ted. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 
Uh, but generally speaking, th- thanks, Eddie. I, you know, we, none of us really needed to know that. One thank and you. two, you know, you gotta check, right. gotta check. Guys, uh, make sure you check. Okay, so, yeah, so he would, so generally speaking, you take the estrogen blockers to reduce the amount of estrogen in your, in your system that the steroids, uh, you know, brings in. So, so that you don't have that effect going on in your chest. That I don't, I can't remember if it was that time or another time that that's that's that that's what he uh, got. Well, caught that, with. that would be a but this a latest good, good reason to hide under an octagon at the gym, as Chell said, mm-hmm. right? Yeah, we had we had that uh, that alleged incident where uh, Usada came unannounced to uh, it was uh, Jackson Winklejohn. Uh, training facility and John Jones was there and whoop, he went right under the, uh, the apron of, of one of the, uh, the cages that was, that was there in the facility hiding who, from you. who did it worse though? John Jones or Josie Aldo spilling the cup of urine on the USADA people. Oh God. Or how about Vanderlei Silva? He ran out of his facility, his own, his own training center was wand training center in Las Vegas when he had it. Ran out of there, or hopped in his car, sped off. Uh, oh my god, bro! You couldn't be any more guilty than that, right? What's the excuse? Cra- yeah, horse meat. This is crazy. Oh yeah, say it was it was horse meat. That's it. Hey, um, yeah, but this the the latest thing with John Jones for those who don't know was um, you, you said the name it. of it. It's the latest no, thing. You, you uh, yeah, bring this up because did you? Are you going to bring up what I'm thinking of? What's the latest thing? Oh yeah, so 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 these these uh, whatever the company is that the UFC now employs to test the fighters, I've you you said it earlier. It has a particular name. I can't remember it. But uh, two of them came to the two of the testers came to John Jones's house at 4 a.m., which that is understood. Like the UFC makes it just as clear as can be. That look, they're going to surprise you when you least expect it. It could be two, three, four, five in the morning, whatever, and and you have to respond and do <clears throat> what they're asking you to do at that time. But John Jones uh, allegedly got really, really upset, and uh, you know, supposedly, uh, you know, he's going to receive a, a, like a summons. He was not arrested, as as some media outlets. Um, reported he wasn't arrested but he's going to receive a summons i guess to appear in court because he allegedly threatened uh one of one of the uh the drug testers and punched her now i, I don't uh, that, uh i don't think he laid hands on her but he 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 took her phone she says so i actually watched she that he, video did you see the video oh yeah that's them high-fiving it's like his one of his security cameras and it shows him walking out, I guess, after everything is done. And, and so you see the two testers and, yeah, he, he high fives her or whatever. But that doesn't tell me much of anything. You know what I mean? That's that's at the end of it all. You know, so hold on, Ted. Uh, For people who, who didn't catch this story, he took I didn't I didn't hear the whole story. He took their phone. The, the woman. So there's a man and a woman. And uh, yeah, so allegedly. He took her phone. I don't know. I think she may have placed it down and then he grabbed it and um, then started recording with it, started recording her with it. And then I hate she was only that able do that to... so much. I hate yeah. it. Ugh. So he started recording her. She asked he for took, it back. He took her phone and recorded her with her phone. That's that's psycho. Yeah. Yeah. And then he only relinquished it, not when she asked for it back, but he set it down when he went to go pee, I guess. And then that's when she was able to recover it. That that's that's what my understanding of what I've read about. Uh, you know, I, I just don't get this guy. You know, I don't get him at all. Uh, I, I is it the arrogance? You know, the narcissism. I think it might be bipolar, very, very bipolar, two different people going on. You know what I mean? Mm hmm. Could very well be. Yeah, but it's just it's just another in a long string of uh, ugly behavior. You know, 
However, Ted, with all that being said, Alex Perea last night brought up he wants to move to heavyweight. So let, let's end oh, it with God. this. I, let's end it with this. Oh, Alex Perea can we not? versus John Jones at heavyweight? I mean, can we not? I, I would like I, to see I, I it. I'm, I'm kind of against all of the, the, the weight hopping that, that fighters do. I, I don't know. I just... Uh, I, I don't know. I don't know why, but you know, it's like okay to get an immediate title shot. Is that what frustrates you? No, it's like they're never satisfied, and and I'm not saying you should like. So so you so you got the you got the light heavyweight belt, you defended it once. Why don't you just see how many wins you can rack up at light heavyweight now that you're there, instead of immediately thinking. Oh, well, I can go over here and do this other thing. When you just got to where you are, you know, you, you he, he was 185. And then, so I don't know why he didn't go back and, and try to beat Adesanya again. That's probably what I would have done. But, you okay, know. I, I was getting so tired of these champions doing three fights, like back to back to back to back. And like the story kind of gets old. I, I like this because... There's more options because he's actually defending the title. So it opens up like this huge roster of, you right. know, possibilities and excitement. I think that's my favorite part of it is wondering, ooh, what would this matchup be like if he fought? Right. So no, yeah. now that, yeah, now that he has the 205, let's, you know, let's see him against uh, uh, Jury Prohaska or, you know, some, some of the other guys. Why, why does he immediately have to think about abandoning that title? to take on something else because he thinks he's going to make more money there. Um, not necessarily look at Anderson Silva. He was commanding over a million dollars a fight and he just, I mean, yeah, he, yeah, he had a couple of fights at two Oh five, but he never, he never made a run for the two Oh five title. Those are, those are just one offs. You know, one was against Forrest Griffin. I can't even remember who the other one was against. Um, but you know what I'm saying? Like he pretty much, yeah, and and look at he 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 has the uh, he has the most wins, uh, most title defenses at 185, right? And and he's a multimillionaire, or at least he should be because of the money that that he and and he's and he's uh, uh, I don't know if he's in the Hall of Fame yet, but he, if he isn't, he will be. He's he's a legendary fighter. So there's something to be said with kind of finding your home and staying there instead of always looking for the bigger, better deal. The grass is always greener, you know? I get that. Because that was an exciting career that Anderson Silva had, and the title defenses that he had as well. Um, yeah. it, it was something, if you were experiencing it, fight the fight. It was John Jones. John Jones as well. But however, he could, the title keeps getting mm -hmm. rolled and this and that. Um, but, Ted, you bring up something kind of wild there with the Anderson Silva thing. Right. Um his career was over years. This guy's doing it so fast. Alex Perez has been in for under two years. Two, right. di I two mean, divisions and defending. It's it's kind of crazy, right? And maybe just maybe he thinks that that he needs to to be doing things this He's fast. Challenging himself. He, yeah, that and and maybe because he already had a career as a kickboxer. So maybe he thinks his his time is short. So and he's you, just you trying brought to up the uh, UFC Hall of Fame. You you really mean the UFC Coffee Break Room Hall of Fame, right? Because there's no actual Hall you of know, Fame. We talked about this before. Like, is it an actual place? No idea. It, you know, like like when you go to the football hall, the professional football hall of fame. They don't call it the NFL Hall of Fame. So but they did the professional football hall of fame in Canton, Ohio. It's an actual place. I've seen it. It's an actual building, right? The, I don't think that the UFC has an actual building. Do they even have, like, so they have that, uh, uh, the, the apex. Do they have a, a, a hallway in the apex where they have plaques of, any, of everybody that they have inducted? If they don't have that, then it, what is the, it's not a hall of fame. It's just you're in the Hall of Fame. There you go. And I put it's your nothing. photo on the wall when people come to visit. 
not even <laughs> it's not even photos on the wall, is it? Or is it? I don't know. I have I have no idea. But uh, did you did you catch this? I'll I'll, I'll drop it on this one here. Um, and then lastly, we're gonna rate this pay per view versus one hundred or two hundred to end it. Um, did you see they inducted Chael Sonnen and they brought up one of the moments was him losing in the final seconds against Henderson Silva as part of his um historic career. That being one of the main ones, like oh. I mean, I think How that he wasn't almost defined. won I, against Anderson Silva. Yeah, no, I mean, because nobody had. Uh, all right, see, I'm going to defend that uh, because nobody up until that point had taken Anderson Silva to the limit. He he uh, didn't he have at the time the record number of punches thrown in in a fight. Uh, now, uh, granted, okay, so you, so you get some people who say, "Well, Anderson Silva came out of that fight and not a scratch on him or whatever." Well, whatever. But but nobody had nobody had taken Anderson Silva. To he the won limit. every round in every fight, I believe. Right. He, he won he won all the rounds except for the round where he got submitted. Yeah, Tail Sun, and he'll no. he'll say like, what what's that? No, I'm talking about uh, Anderson Silva through throughout his oh. career. I don't oh, think okay. he, I don't think he lost any, or maybe maybe I'm thinking of John Jones actually, John Jones. Is the okay. one. No, I mean Silva lost all of those rounds, I think, until the round that where he where he submitted Chael Sonnen, which I guess was the was oh, the fourth yeah. of the fifth. Yeah, I'm actually mixing it up too, Ted. It's it's John okay. Jones has never lost, so, um, or had a split decision up until that one. So I, so anyway, yeah, Chael Sonnen. I mean, I no, I think that was a career defining moment for him, even though even though he lost. Um, shame that he did, but but he did. Um, you know, but yeah, no, I, 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 it was a tremendous performance by his one of his best performances. Um, you know, the way the he was able to promote as well. I mean, he didn't need anybody behind him. He had his own thing. It was pure American, uh, graffiti, right? A pure American, just boy from Ohio, right? He's from Ohio, I believe. No, no, Oregon, Oregon. That's right guy from Oregon yeah, coming yeah. in talking shit against Brazil he's the original right. Kobe Covington you know well yeah I mean if you look at the progression you know Conor McGregor was was kind of the, the first guy and and then trash talking and then there was Chael and then and then and then Kobe I think I think no if, no, if you no, look no. Whoa, whoa, whoa. You met, you're mixing it up Chael and then Conor and then Kobe are you sure yeah Chael son and way before Conor okay okay all right Chael Sonnen was... All right, so... Yeah. Anyway. Uh, yeah. That's what I remember. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, so much has happened. <laughs> anyway, so... Yeah, no, I... Uh, what, 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 what? I forget now. What what were you asking me about, about Chael Sonnen? No, you're... you're oh, just he's from free... Oregon. Yeah, and he... And he um, right, he, he would joke about that, that he, he... You know, he was born with a silver spoon in his mouth. He would try, he would call himself the American. It was all a big joke. Like he would say, "Oh, I'm the I'm the American gangster. I come from the tough streets of, uh, what was it, West Lynn, Oregon, you know." And and then yeah. So I, oh, the guy was the guy was great. The guy was a great trash talker, especially for the Anderson Silva uh, build up. Definitely deserves spot in the Hall of Fame. Josie Aldo bawling his eyes out as well. Um, yeah, le legendary, legendary, um, fighters right there. But Ted, getting to this point in the show, let's wrap it up with who did it better? UFC 100, 200, or 300? Now that we can look back, and I know UFC 100 may not be fresh in your head or 200 fresh in your head, but I kind of really summed it up like this. UFC 200, we kind of made it more special than what it really was looking back. UFC 100 was an iconic moment because, you know, Brock Lesnar and... Uh, GSP and then the Hendo bomb, but the UFC 300, all the shit talking, everyone trashing the card and not, not really enjoying it. Now that I'm looking back at 200 and 100 in the lineups, UFC 300 really did it the best. And I really got to congratulate the UFC on this one. Um, mm. absolutely iconic. And then to put this much trust that the fights wouldn't be all decisions or this and that. It couldn't have gone any better, Ted. I give UFC mm. 300 the crown for all three. This was the best one. 
All right. All right. So it's it's uh, the king of the mountain. All right. I mean, I, yeah. I, oof. Uh, I mean, it's definitely better than 200. I, I don't know. I, I, I kind of look at 300 and 100. Let's almost, do this. Almost equal. Your favorite moment from UFC 100, UFC 200, and UFC 300. Oh. Me, uh, me easily. Hendo bomb. Hendo bomb. Yeah, the Hendo, the Hendo hammer. I think they call it. Or what? Well, yeah. Uh, uh, UFC two hundred didn't really have two, two, 200 would be the would be the the the, the golden uh, mat. <laughs> Remember they, they made the ring, the ring mat. They made they are the, the cage. They made it golden. Yeah. Remember that? I could not uh, stand it. And and then the, and then the fallout from the Brock Lesnar. Uh, Mark Hunt fight when when uh, because because Lesnar was was on on the juice and they knew he was on the juice. They knew he was and, on the juice. And, they, and they, yet they delayed the results of, of that so that he could. I think it was so that he could get on the fight card, because if if that happened, if he wasn't, then the whole thing would have gone to shit. That it's mafia. So type shit. Some, it, it's so some, mafia. Shenanigans, skull dudgery, and I love how they get called out for it too. Um, but yeah, we Ted, could. UFC 300 had plenty of moments, but nothing tops Max Holloway center of the octagon one second. Nothing tops shooing away Herb Dean after getting kicked in the nuts and finishing the fight in the first round of the main event for UFC 300 as a new fighter inside the UFC. Uh, it was just absolutely beautiful. Um, what do you give this card? Agreed. What, what are we doing? Five stars out of out of five stars? No, is this the best out of one, two, or three? One hundred, two hundred, or three hundred? I mean, I, I, well, I said I said it was. It's kind of I don't know. It's a toss up between one hundred and three hundred. I mean, if you know, uh, gun to my head. Um, yeah, I'll go with three hundred. Not because it's fresh in the head, because we're going to remember those moments. It had moments that stick with you. UFC 189, what sticked with you? Robbie Lawler versus Rory McDonald, right? You remember some oh. of these weird numbers, right? Oh, wow. But then UFC 300, oh, my God. you'll always remember 300, right? You'll always remember what's attached to it. And I think that's what they did the best. And the fighters getting the bonuses as well. It, it, it was just the best, Ted. And uh, it was awesome actually reviewing UFC 300 with you because we did UFC 200. And I really wanted to bring us together again for this because over the years, we've seen so many magical moments. And anyone listening to this podcast right now, I want to get you excited about something. Me and Ted covered historic moments as I'm going back into the vault of some of the most iconic times, the most insane headlines when MMA was still the wild west. Me and Ted were there <laughs> week after week catching these headlines raw before podcasting was podcasting. Me and Ted were podcasting and we're going to yeah. bring back some of the highlights from that. Go check out our UFC 200 Reaction to John Bones live during our podcast, finding out he's getting pulled. We're going to be bringing back more of that, and they're going to be premiering live on the channel as well. Um, so definitely look forward to that and subscribe down below. Ted, um, what do you got planned coming up uh, with, with your life, and uh, what's the next MMA fight you're excited for? How about that? Hmm. Huh. Uh, geez. Oh, my, my life? Uh, well, still working on the book. Uh, I'm... I have the, uh, it's gone to my editor and then she's, uh, giving it back to me. So I have a, this is like the first round of edits. I saw that you posted something about that. Yeah. Congratulations on that. That's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. The last time I posted, I said, I, I said I had finished the rough draft and had given it to my editor. Now she has given it back to me. So we're, we, I have up to three rounds of editing if, if I want, or if, if the book needs it. Um, Have you tried I'll, chat I'll GPT probably... with it? Oh, no. No, 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 no. I don't go anywhere near that. That's actually one of the... So the 
The Ooh. book is about the media and and how the the and relationship AI. between the media and the American public has has uh, been severed. So one of the things that I am suggesting needs to happen is is for the media to distance itself from AI. You don't want to get involved with AI. Uh, you saw what happened with Sports Illustrated. They started creating personas through AI and they started generating stories through AI and and now that they're, they're no more. And it's not the only factor, but that's probably one of the one of the factors. Yeah, read up on it. What do you read mean personas? But, building personas like on like fake people, fake writers, fake fake people. Uh, but but other other newspapers have tried to use AI to write to generate stories with horrific results. <clears throat> yeah, um, there was one. There was a there was an NF no not NFL NBA player. Now he wasn't like a great player per se, but let's say he had been in maybe 50 games. Well, they said, AI said he had been in 50 video games. They didn't say NBA games. And, they, and then they, they basically called him like worthless or something like that. It was terrible. So right now they got to stay away from AI. That's, that's not the way to go. You need real people writing real stories. So the minds of, of man can wanna, be manipulated to so time. easily too. It's scary. What's that? The the mind it? of a man, the human mind can be manipulated into things <laughs> so easily. So that's really mm -hmm. exciting that you're doing this book, Ted. I, I definitely want to be able to check it out as part of uh, media. And you've been doing media for how many years now? Well, well I, I spent 25 years as a newspaper reporter. And then uh, these past three years, I'm, well, I made the switch to uh, public relations. So now that's that's it's just still under the the communications umbrella. It's just another aspect of it. But you're so. calling yourself the recovering reporter. Is that the name of the book or? No, no, no. no. Uh, it's not the name of the book. But, yeah, I do call myself the recovering reporter now. Uh, <laughs> like oh, like uh, like reporting like journalism is a sickness or something <laughs> that, you have to, that you have to recover from. I've been seeing uh, a lot of uh, people in the media that have been dropping out and doing something kind of similar, uh, speaking out, being like, uh, you guys got to wake up right now before it's too late. So this is really exciting, Ted. I'm looking forward to it. This year is off to a great start, 2024, for Mixed Martial Arts. Yes, sir. Right when I thought Mixed Martial Arts was doomed the last couple of years, the excitement, the rawness, the real personalities of these fighters and their freedom, the pay, the new fans, Ted, we got an exciting venture ahead of us as we go on past UFC 300 to 301, 302. And I cannot wait to see what happens between 300 and 400. With that being said, guys, tune in because we're going to be talking about everything that happens here on out. And I hope that you are strapped in and ready for it because we're here. We're excited and the passion is back. And I hope that you guys Enjoyed yourself tonight on this podcast. Subscribe down below. Ted, where can they find you before we sign off? Where, where can they find you on social media? I'm on, I'm on YouTube. Uh, that's Recovering Reporter. And uh, I'm on Instagram a little bit. And uh, I'm on X. I just I just got my blue check mark on X. Okay, that's awesome. That's awesome. Congratulations yep. on yep. that, too. Just got that. That's got on lock. Yeah, I got so. I got a good in on. How about you, man? Yeah. Where where are you? Don't don't forget to tell Hey everyone, X Evil Eddie X at Pure Evil MMA underscore and YouTube.com Pure Evil MMA. But guys, check out the podcast on iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, everywhere you can get the show. And Ted, I want to thank you so much for joining me once again tonight on another episode of Evil Intoxicated, you, as we called it. UFC three hundred, Evil Intoxicated. Um that does it for this episode. And I hope you guys remember, without evil, there's no purity. White knuckles till the end. Behave yourselves. <laughs>